All right, fraction, fraction, fraction. So finally we get a good problem, right? Something that's gonna get you excited and worthy. Like, hey, yeah, I can't wait to try this problem. So let's go ahead and uh, work on this problem to go and see. So we know we have two points, so at least we can label them. This isn't gonna be too hard. We can at least label them as x and y and x and y, where our x is is going to be x1, x2, y1, y2. All right, so now the next thing we need to do is we need to determine what the slope is. Now, I'm going to use a slope formula in this case rather than plugging it into my equation for point slope form, just because, I don't know, I want to. So if I was going to find my slope, remember slope equation is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'm going to have m equals 1 third minus a negative 1 half all over x2, which is a negative 2 thirds minus 3 halves. Now the reason actually why I did it in this way, because I know I needed a little bit more space because I'm going to have to uh, get common denominators. So we notice with our common denominators between 3 and 2, the common denominator is 6. So I need to determine what do I need to do to get my 3 to be a 6? Well, I need to multiply by 2. But remember, when getting common denominators, whatever you do in your denominator, you have to do in your numerator. And then to get 2 to be 6, I need to multiply by 3 over 3. We're going to do the same thing over here. All right, we also know minus a negative, that's going to turn to a positive. So now let's just go ahead and rewrite our, uh, our equation, or our formula. So therefore, now we have 2, 6 plus 3, 6 all over a negative 4, 6 minus 9, 6. Yay, all right. Uh, looking good. So now I can add these up. So therefore, we have 5, 6 over, that's going to be a negative 13, 6. So that's a pretty crazy fraction, right, for our slope. Well, we can't have a double fraction for our slope. So we're going to have to get rid of this by using our denominator. So we'll multiply by the reciprocal. So we multiply by 6 over negative 13 on the bottom and the top. As long as, remember, as long as we're multiplying on the top and the bottom, we're fine. We're not changing our fraction. Well, the helpful thing about multiplying by this reciprocal is you can see that now these sixes divide up to 1. So we're left with the slope of negative 5 over 13. And that's going to be helpful. So now we know our slope, m equals a negative 5 over 13. So now, since we know that slope, all we need to do is just pick one of these points to plug into to be able to find our equation. And I don't know, since my original equation has y1, x1, let's just uh, let's go and use that. So I have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Now I can, we could use x2 and y2 and just change the ones to twos and then use that point. But it doesn't really matter. So since we already have this, we'll just plug in this. So we have y minus a negative 1 half equals my slope, which is a negative 5 over 13, times x minus 3 halves. All right. Well, this becomes a double negative again, so this is y plus 1 half. We can apply distributive property here. So therefore, I have a negative 5 thirteenths x plus 15 over 26. Mm. Then to solve for y, I'll subtract 1 half on both sides. And again, we got some more fraction work that we need to do. So I'll just do it a little on a sidebar here. So I have 15 over 26 minus 1 half. Well, again, remember, we need to make sure we have common denominators. So I need to say, what do I need to get to 2 to be to 26? Well, that means I can multiply by 13. Whatever I do in the bottom, I have to do in the top. So therefore, I have 15 over 26 minus 13 over 26. Well, that's going to become 2 over 26, which is equal to 1 over 13. So therefore, now I have my final equation is y equals a negative 5 over 13x plus 1 over 13. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you convert from two points down to slope-intercept form. Thanks.